Well, I'm at a rather nondescript road here in Merseyside, just outside the town of Newton Lee Willows, or as the locals might say, Newton Lee Willows, famous for being birthplace of Sir Richard de Astley, who would never give you up, let you down, run around, or even desert you. But I'm not here to look at that, and neither am I here to look at this. What I want to do is cross the road and have a look at the railway line below us. Liverpool and Manchester line, which was opened in 1830. First purpose-built railway line for passengers rather than just for coal or freight. World's first modern intercity passenger line. And that is the monument to William Huskisson. I'm going to talk about him. The problem is I can't really get a better view of his monument than here. The world's first railway fatality. In fact, probably not, but probably the most famous railway fatality in the early days of railways. Other people must have got killed building railways or even travelling by train. But this is the first famous railway fatality. William Huskisson, Member of Parliament for Liverpool, and the spot right here where he had his accident. Now, Huskisson had been a Member of Parliament for over 35 years when we saw the opening of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. He was President of the Board of Trade, Member of Parliament for Liverpool. Not only that, he'd been involved in certain repealing of laws, slavery for example, but he didn't go too far with that, but what he did was he wanted to promote free trade and abolish the Corn Laws. And the Corn Laws have been established to protect British farming. Grain prices have to be a certain, certain price before cheap foreign corn could be brought in. That was great for the farmers. Wasn't very good for people buying bread. And of course they didn't have much disposable income because they were spending all their money buying bread. There wasn't enough money to buy other things. The manufacturers weren't too happy either. So as Board of Trade, Huskisson certainly wanted to abolish the Corn Laws, although they were abolished a long time after his death. He never lived long enough to see that happening. But he'd have been remembered for all of that had he not died in a railway accident right here. Now this is his monument. Obviously not easy to be seen. And this was a site of Parkside Railway Station. It didn't last very long. It was actually a closure back in the 19th century. But Huskisson was down here travelling on the opening day of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. You can see, actually, we've got two tracks down there and trains travelling in both directions. The opening of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, trains were travelling the same direction using both tracks. And it was Northumbria, a locomotive being hauled and driven by George Stevenson, that was carrying the Duke of Wellington and William Huskisson. And Huskisson wanted to talk to the Duke of Wellington. So when the train paused here at Parkside Station to collect water, Huskisson got off the train right here to go and see the Duke. But on the other track, travelling in the same direction, was Rocket being driven by Joseph Locke, the engineer. And that train came along. People saying, Huskisson, get out of the way, get out of the way. And on the parallel track, coming along here, poof, Huskisson fell over and was run over by Rocket. Well, pandemonium ensued. They had to get to a hospital very quickly. George Stevenson on Northumbria actually got Huskisson as fast as he could to Eccles, which is in this direction. They actually took a door off one of the trains and turned it into a makeshift stretcher. As he travelled to Eccles, unfortunately there was no doctor present. Huskisson died. So though he was a politician for many years, he's now known as the world's first railway fatality. Something going on the other side of the road there. I'm hoping they're going to make a viewpoint for this memorial because you can't really see it at all. I'm trying my best to get over these uh, palisade fences, but you can't. And so that monument to Huskisson, just here, is only to be able to be seen, really, from this path. Trains usually go past about 90 miles an hour, so they don't really get to see the monument. So that's a bit of a shame. That's all I can show you. Maybe I should have gone off to see the birthplace of Rick Astley instead. <laughs> the man who would never 
say a fond farewell, never tell a fib. <laughs> Rick Astley, that is, not William Huskisson. <laughs> I've got the song in the head now. <laughs> you know the one. Match.men and match.cats and dogs.